All right, this is the Adjustment Bureau, Philip K. Dick and Philosophy. Let's get into it, guys. The Adjustment Bureau was a, uh, the kind of movie I don't really watch much. I sort of, uh, it's not my type of thing, but I, I gave it up a little bit for Philip K. Dick. Okay, one of the finest science fiction writers of my youth. And, uh, you know, when I was a little kid, I wanted my science fiction to be about black holes. I wanted it to be about aliens. I wanted it to be about scientists, action people, lush green planets, uh, you know, assuming that that would exist and, and that life would be plant-like. But, you know, when you're that age, you, you tend to assume things like that. Um, I didn't necessarily want my science fiction, and, and if it was philosophy science fiction, I wanted it to be kind of linear, to get to the philosophical point. But when I was a teenager, I finally got it. In other words, I got the idea of nonlinearity, of playing with timelines. Uh, in the case of Radio Free Album with Philip K. Dick, in some sense, posited the debate between the Republic and the military-industrial complex system of government, where he, he had a timeline where the military-industrial complex took over completely, but he raises the question, is, uh, it, it, in the ultimate sense, he raises the question, is that so different than our timeline here? Was the president uh, who became a dictator in this this timeline here is so different than Richard Nixon. Okay, so that's an interesting play on timelines. If we have multiple timelines, are they really that different from one another? In the case of the Adjustment Bureau, I have to admit I didn't read the original story. I, I just saw the movie, and but I have to say it had Philip K. Dick written all over it. Once again, you have different timeline potentialities. Uh, and again, I, I want to try to keep this from being a spoiler, but if it is... Uh, stop the video and see the movie. So potential spoiler alert. Uh, my my apologies. I would still see the movie anyway. But we have multiple timelines. You know, does the Matt Damon character get to be president or not? What is determined in this in this scenario? Is it? Let's step away from nineteenth century determinism and let's consider the idea of determinedism. Even if there's no determinism, it are, is our pathway determined? Um, and so we have the we have the possibility that Matt Damon gets to be president. Now, unlike the dictator president in Radio Free Album, with Matt Damon as a good guy. In other words, he's a good guy. He wants to shake things up. He wants to help the people. He wants to heal the planet. He wants to get us off of oil onto solar. You know, the the, the whole nine yards. He's he's a good guy. He's what people thought they saw on JFK in 1960 and, and did see. He's what people thought they saw, you know, well, they saw it in JFK, but then JFK was cut down, all right? He's what they thought they saw in Barack Obama, but he disappointed everybody uh, in the ultimate way, all right? So, you know, it, he's kind of a wish. The Matt Damon character is a wish for somebody who would... Uh, in, in American tradition, you might say stand by his guns. You might also say would, would, would be something other than the type of politician we vote for who is, is, is a fake, and then we vote for the fake, and he becomes a fake, a shill for the 1%, and then we regret that we voted for him, never minding the fact that we were the ones who voted him in. Well, in the case of Matt Damon, he's, he's authentic. In fact, he's too authentic. He's so authentic that he... he, he he basically is just unelectable. Well, his campaign manager knows it, but he also has another problem, and that is there's a campaign manager beyond his campaign manager, and that would be some kind of force that is ambiguous throughout the movie, but that manifests as nicely dressed guys with hats and suits cooler than mine, okay, who seem to be able to affect the timeline and want to alter the timeline so that Matt Damon gets to be president. The problem is Matt Damon has fallen in love with <clears throat> somebody who could never be first lady. She's a dancer. She's uh, uh, She won't follow the script. And the bottom line is that she's not going to be like Laura Bush or, or Michelle Obama or uh, Nancy Reagan or uh, she might be a little bit like Betty Ford. I, I can tell you this much. There was a time in our history when somebody like Dolly Madison or Mary Tom Lincoln or Eleanor Roosevelt could be elected, well, you know, could be first lady. 
Um, but that time is gone now in this media driven age. Somebody, people who are that original and that authentic probably wouldn't be first lady. And so these entities have a point. He's got to, if he's going to be president, he probably is going to have to forget her. But the thing is, is, they may have the best interests of humanity at heart. The problem is they're not bringing humanity into their confidence. In a strange, funny way, they mirror, they may oppose uh, the, the military industrial complex state. Uh, and want him in there to shake it up. But the problem is that they mirror some aspects of our own society here. They're, they're modeled like a corporation. They have secrets and they have agendas. And so the bottom line is that they, they can claim to be benevolent, but they don't actually manifest benevolence by taking us into their confidence. According to the movie, they um, have been an overarching presence since the hunter-gatherer times Maybe they genetically engineered us. We don't know. We're, we're never quite sure. They claim that every time they slack off, we, we degenerate and descend. Now, that's their claim. But they have used deception. And that's a key important thing to remember in the movie, that they have used deception. Uh, it's a great love story, and it's a great... I, I think that you should see it. I, I want to ask a question, though, uh, as to who they are. Are they aliens in classic science fiction sense, or are they angels in more of a religious sense? And Philip K. Dick being Philip K. Dick, I'm sure he played with all sorts of philosophies of Gnosticism and all sorts of ideas from, from uh, esoteric religious traditions. If they are aliens, you have to ask the question of why they look so human-like and why they act so human-like. If they are angels, you have to ask the question of why angels would utilize deception, even seemingly benevolent deception. I think maybe there's a third possibility, and that is maybe Philip K. Dick was exploring the idea that an overarching presence over, let, let's say there are influences over humanity that, uh, well, perhaps something akin to what Carl Jung would call the collective unconscious, I don't know. But the idea of a projection of ourselves that is a reflection of ourselves. If, for instance, aliens... If they are aliens, that could manifest the possibility that they are a projection of the modern rational state onto the vast cosmos itself. Remember that aliens, as a speculation, first came about during the time of the Enlightenment, when um, the rational state was first being formulated as a concept. And so in some sense, what does the rational state utilize? Well, a great deal of of concealment of the truth. You know, the, the knowledge is power, is, is, is a scientias potentias, a, uh, a motto of modern day intelligence agencies. And so in some sense, there's the concealment, there's a need to know basis here. All right. So, and, and in some ways, are they, would they be real aliens or would they be a projection of our own selves onto the cosmos? If they are angels and they use deception, well, what have religious organizations been doing? Utilizing deception, right? Concealing things, the various scandals, uh, also alignments, it, going back centuries ago, alignments with kings. And there's a strange sense in which both possibilities mirror one another. So you have to ask yourself, are these real angels or real aliens? Or are they, in some sense, a matrix network that keeps us in... Do just that. There we go. That sort of keeps us enmeshed in our own... Uh, lighting's not very good here, but I'll give it a, I'll, I'm going to wrap it up anyway. That, that keeps us enmeshed in our own uh, ways, even as they, they claim to be trying to help us. I think, it's, I think that the, the quest, that question is unresolved. Philip K. Dick explored the intersection of science and religion, and I think it's a great way to end the science and religion series, and that would be to bring in Philip K. Dick because he explored ideas that he didn't come to dogmatic conclusions about. And I think that uh, he was open to the idea that there were real aliens. He was open to the idea that there were real angels. But I believe he felt that if we were going to get to truth, that we had to get beyond our own neural loops and we had to get beyond our own uh, um, being enmeshed by our own ideologies. And I think if there is an intersection of science and religion, then in order to get there, we first have to stop projecting our own 
uh, tendencies as a species onto the vast cosmos and accept what's really out there as being what's really out there. Thank you.